Coronation quiche on the menu this weekend. Yes, King Charles is making it official. And let's be real, I love a bit of pomp as much as the next guy, but we're talking about a bloke no one really likes putting on a new hat. And British taxpayers might be spending as much as $180 million for the privilege. Coronations have been held at Westminster Abbey since the year 1066, back when the English public were struggling to put food on the table. I didn't know you were called Dennis. Well, you didn't bother to find out, did you? And the lavish excesses of the aristocracy were a little gross. I order you to be quiet. Order? Who does he think he is? <laughs> I'm your king. Well, I didn't vote for you. Oh, wait. Not much has changed. UK teachers are on strike for more money, the health system is stuffed and a cost of living crisis has plunged millions of people into poverty. But taxpayers are picking up a $15 million bill to put free portraits of King Charles into any school or government department that wants one. I've passed, but thank you. There's nothing like the image of a smiling, sausage-fingered billionaire looking down at you to make you forget about your own troubles. Some Brits aren't happy about it. Yeah, I don't blame them. A recent YouGov poll found 64% of POMs didn't actually give a shit about the coronation. Another poll found more than half of those surveyed didn't want to pay for it. I want that money! Give me my money! <laughs> in fact, Britain is the only monarchy in Europe today that still persists with elaborate coronation rites. I mean. The others just have a simpler inauguration or church service. Well, some like to put on a show. That's true. Like in the Ashanti Kingdom of Ghana, where the new king is lowered over a golden stool, making sure his butt never touches it. It ain't easy being king. In Bhutan, meanwhile, the date of the coronation is determined by an astrologer and the new ruler is given eight objects meant to symbolise the virtues of a good monarch. They include the Umbrella of Supremacy and the Fish of Wisdom. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. If it was up to me, the Archbishop of Canterbury would present Charles with the Tampax of not being weird. To remind our king that he was once recorded telling Camilla he could be reincarnated as a tampon so he could live inside her pants. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? Look, far be it from me to kink shame anybody, but your probs won't catch me swearing allegiance to that bloke when the homage of the people is read out on Saturday. Anthony Albanese will. Yeah, a bit awkward too, given he's the first Prime Minister in Australian history to appoint an Assistant Minister for the Republic. Don't get it twisted, folks. The royal family is an endangered species down under, a bit like WA's Western Ground Parrot. A society dedicated to preserving this little green parrot got 10 grand as Australia's official coronation gift to Charles. I love that. We need it now. We need it now. Albo is one of a bunch of VIPs who'll attend the coronation and celeb spotting is honestly one of the best reasons to tune in. Lionel Richie will apparently be there, who knows why, and Joanna Lumley. Thomas. Bloody hell. And then there are rumours David and Victoria Beckham will rock up and no doubt heaps of the famous faces we've seen at various royal weddings and funerals in recent years. US President Joe Biden's not going to go. Yeah, probably because he's confused it with the coronation of King Charles I in 1625 <laughs> and thought... Been there, done that. <laughs> I'm laughing too. An invite was even extended to North Korea, which sounds freaking stupid, but I guess if you're going to have Prince Andrew there, the bar is already set pretty low. Y'all a bunch of filthy motherfuckers. Hopefully the fashion will be good at least. Well, it can't be any more underwhelming than what we saw at the Met Gala. Ah, yes. New York's annual display of fashion, celebrity and questionable choices. Who? Is, wait, so who made it? Wow. <laughs> One of which was this year's theme, Karl Lagerfeld, the German fashion icon who died in 2019. Now, the Met Gala has previously copped criticism for its breathless and maskless show of wealth while billions of people around the world were battling a pandemic. But shelling out 44 grand a ticket to celebrate Lagerfeld is even worse. He might be a genius, but this is a bloke who lampooned the Me Too movement. He fat-shamed women repeatedly and once said in an interview that Germany's best invention was the Holocaust. Wow. <laughs> people have been cancelled for a lot less. British actor Jamila Jamil of The Good Place fame absolutely roasted celebs who attended, and rightly so. They want to be seen as tireless activists for righteous causes, but turned a blind eye to Lagerfeld's many indiscretions just for a chance to get frocked up. So Jamila is dead right that it's very convenient for all of these celebs to ignore an embarrassing past just for a moment in the spotlight. Not like we'd ever do that. <laughs> I'm Ben O'Shea. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.